Come on, let's worship God. How does it make you feel? I don't care what they say. He thought you were worth saving. Verses 1 through 10. 
It says, um, so boys went to the town gate and took a seat there. When the family redeemer, he had mentioned, came by, Boaz called out to him. Come over here, friend. I want to talk to you. So they sat down together. The boy has called ten leaders from the town and asked them to sit down as witnesses. And boy has said to the family of Redeem, you know Naomi, who came back from Moab. She is selling the land that belonged to our relative Elimelech. I felt that I should speak to you about it so that you can redeem it, if you wish. If you want the land, then buy it here in the presence of these witnesses. But if you don't want it, let me know right away because I am next in line to redeem it after you. The man replied, all right, I'll redeem it. Then Morris told him, of course, your purchase of the land from Naomi also requires that you marry Ruth, the Moabite widow. That way she can have children who will carry on her husband's name and keep the land in the family. Then I can't, then, then I, I can't, I can't redeem it then, I can't do it. The family redeemer replied out, because this might endanger my own estate. You redeem the land, I can't do it. In those days it was a custom in Israel for anyone transferring a right of purchase to remove his sandal and hand it to the other party. This publicly validated the transaction. So the other family redeemer drew off his sandal as he said to Boaz, you buy the land. He handed him the sandal at the same time. I'm passing up my right to redeem the land. I'm giving you the right to redeem the land. Can I tell somebody here, if one don't want you, Another one will. You know, don't get upset because one don't want you. Oh, there's somebody out there that wants you. I just said that ain't even a sermon right there, but somebody need to know that. <laughs> then Boaz said to the leaders and to the crowd standing around, You are witnesses that today I have bought from Naomi all the property of Elimelech, Kilion, and Mahil. And with the land, I have acquired Ruth, the Moabite widow of Mahila, to be my wife. This way, she can have a son to carry on the family name and her dead husband and, and to inherit the family property here in his hometown. You are all witnesses today. Tell her today's word is from dreams to kings. From dreams to kingdoms. You know, many will never reach their full potential nor witness the fullness of the promises of God for their lives simply because of a lack of drive. It, 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 I, 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 I just want to tell you, even though we fight to bring hurdles down, we fight to bring stuff down, the reality is, is when you belong to God, the hurdles can't stop you. Because really what God will do is he'll take something that that somebody put in your path to be a stumbling stone. He'll flip it over and he'll make it a stepping stool. So that you can reach higher in life. And, 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 and so, and so we, we fight to remove the, the hurdles. We fight to remove the obstacles. But even with the hurdles and the obstacles, if we are fully aware of who we are and who we are, there's nothing that can stop us from doing anything and becoming what God has ordained us to be. And so many simply can't get it, they can't get there because of a lack of drive. A mindset of mediocrity may be the critical factor which determines whether we birth forth kings or stay stuck in dreams. The mindset. The mindset, our mindset can determine whether we birth forth kings or stay stuck in dreams. I, as much as I love Dr. King's speech, I have a dream. Can I tell you that, that after 56 years since that speech, 
I dream. I ain't interested in dreaming no more. There's some stuff out there belong to me. I'm going to get it by any means necessary. Yes, sir. I ain't sitting back and begging nobody. Sitting and waiting on nobody to hand it to me. I'm going to get it because it's mine. All right, all right. If somebody driving your car around, you going to just sit and wait for them to bring it back to your house? No, just, I just need a call telling me where it's at. Well, we can do this the hard way or the easy way. But you're going to get in my car and you can't, you can't ride down in my stuff because it belongs to me. And there's some stuff that, 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 that belongs to us as children of God that we've been dreaming for 56 years or longer than that. But we can every, 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 every January we go and have these banquets keep dreaming. I ain't interested in dreaming. I'm tired of dreaming. This thing is a nightmare right now. If I ain't got this thing in 56 years. This dream is a nightmare. Why? Because of a lack of drive on my part. Waiting on somebody else to deliver the dream. Some of us need to wake up and aggressively position ourselves to get everything that the master promised and the enemy stole. Just need to position yourself. You don't even necessarily need to fight. But you need to be willing to stand up there like you're ready to fight. You can't fix it, hide behind nobody, waiting on somebody else to fight for you. The battle is the Lord, but you got to show up. At Jericho, Joshua, they, they had to show up. They couldn't just sit back there and wait for God. They had to show up. They had to walk around the wall. They had to shout when it was time to shout. They even had to go when everybody else was scared. All these religious somebodies scared of this giant called the light. Somebody needed to show up. David said, I'll fight it. Oh God, these are somebody willing to show up to the fight and get out the bed and stop dreaming. Let's look at Luke chapter 1, verse 6 through 15. I'm going to show you three women and three actions. Ruth chapter 1, 6 through, 6 through 15, this is what it says. It says, Then they only heard in Moab that the Lord had blessed his people in Judah by giving them good crops again. So Naomi and her daughter-in-law got ready to leave Moab to return to their homeland. With her two daughter-in-law, she set out from the place where she had been living, and they took the road that would lead them back to Judah. But on the way, Naomi said to her two daughter-in-law, y'all go back to your, your mother's home instead of coming with me. And may the Lord reward you for your kindness to your husbands and to me. And may the Lord bless you with the security of another marriage. Then she kissed them goodbye and they, they all broke down and they, and they wept. No, they said, we want to go with you to your people. We didn't marry your son. We're part of the family now. But they only replied, why should you go on with me? Can I still give birth to other sons? My other sons have died. My husband did. Your husband's dead. Who are my sons? They're, they're dead. I'm too old. Can I give birth to, to more sons who would, would grow up to be your husbands? No, my daughters, return to your parents' homes, for I am too old to marry again. And, and even if I were, if it were possible and I were to get married tonight and bear a son, then what? Would you wait for them to grow up and refuse to marry someone else? No, of course not, my daughters. Things are far more bitter for me than for you because the Lord himself has caused me to suffer. And again, they wept and cried and, and Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye. But Ruth insisted on staying with Naomi. See, Naomi said to her, 
Your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. You should do the same. Show you what Orpah did. Orpah went back. She went back to where God had brought her from. Can't get no way in life going back. When tragedy distracts, it is not, it doesn't distract to destroy us. We have to figure out how to keep pressing forward. But here in this situation, Orpah has, has come into this blessed blood bloodline. And she suffered tragedy, but she turned back. How many of us have done it before? That we suffered some kind of tragedy and, and found ourselves we're back look more desirable than going forward. Found ourselves in a situation to, where we're turning back to the gods that we knew look safer than going to the god that we just met. Or but she she turned back to the gods that she knew of for you and denied the opportunity, denied herself the opportunity to go forward. Orpah, she goes back. Let's look at Ruth, chapter 1, verses 16 through 21. It says, but Ruth replied, don't ask me to leave you and turn back. I will go wherever you go. Her sister-in-law is going back in the face of turmoil. But Orpah, Ruth says, Naomi don't ask me to leave you and turn back. I will go wherever you go and live wherever you live. Your people will be my people and, and your God will be my God. Can I tell you that when I gave my life to Christ in 1994, it was some things that I was doing and I was doing, I wasn't, I, I just, I, I was a good person, but I need, I wanted a certain life for my family. And I, 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 I tried it on, on a job, but I, I just wasn't built to be there. I wasn't, wasn't built to be there. After, after a couple incidents, I realized I'm either going to go, I'm either go to jail, or I might need to find a different direction. And so I began to do some other things so that my family could still have a nice life. But once I got saved, what I was doing and salvation didn't match. I couldn't be saved to do what I was doing. And so I came and gave God everything kind of like Ruth. He said, I'm going to follow God. I'm going to follow Naomi's God. I'm connected to Naomi's family. I'm, I'm connected, but but can I tell you, life got kind of rough. Life got kind of tough. I was trying to do some things, trying to be a, an entrepreneur, but I couldn't make the kind of money that I was making before Christ. Hiding cars and hiding ski boats and Hiding things and trying to, to maintain and finally losing cars and losing ski boats and lights getting turned off and wife and left me and everything going crazy. Can I tell you? Back like there, sure look good. I knew how to take care of my family when I was back there. But up here, I'm on an extension cord to Mama House. Just to run a lamp in a refrigerator. I understand Opa. I, 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 I'm feeling Opa. I, I know what she, but 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 Bruce said, "Don't ask me to turn around." He says, "She says I will die where you die. I didn't come this far to turn around. I left where I was for a reason. I didn't come this far to turn around to all the stuff that." God has delivered me from. I, 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 I didn't come to where I am now to, to, to get here and, and still do the I, I, I came here for a reason. And it, it might get tough, it might get rough, but, but, but I left there. Has anybody ever 
don't raise your hand because you still might be the only one. But being in a bad relationship and then God helps you get out of the relationship, but then you spend a little time by yourself, then all of a sudden you forget how bad the relationship was. And now the same thing that God delivered you from, now you're looking right that direction. Now you accepting calls now. Now you giggling on the phone now. Now, now you let them come over at 2 o'clock in the morning now. Now, now, now the same stuff God delivered you from, you're going to step back in. And now you back in it. And then the real deal comes back out again. And you wonder to tell, how in the world was God delivered me? It's like a dog. Have you ever owned a dog before? Dog gets sick to the stomach and vomit, then turn around and eat it. It's like turning around, God got rid of it for you. And you turn around and now you eat it again. I can't go back. I got to figure this thing out right here. I can't go back. Ruth said, I would die where you die. And, and we'll be buried there. May the Lord punish me severely if I allow anything but death to separate us. So when they only saw that Ruth had, had made up her, her mind to go with her, she stopped urging her. It says, so the, the, two, so the two of them continued on their journey. And then it says that when they came to Bethlehem, the entire town was, was stirred up at their arrival. And it says, it, 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 is it really Naomi? The women asked it because they remember Naomi. And, and, they re, and, and it says, and, and, but Naomi's response was, don't call me Naomi. They were happy. Is it, I remember Naomi. Naomi is blessed. I, I remember Naomi. Naomi, Naomi is a blessed woman. But, but when Naomi returned to the town, going in the direction that God is blessed, her, she said, don't call me Naomi. Instead, call me Mara. For the Almighty has made life very bitter for me. She renamed herself. She named, renamed herself based on her current condition. No, my current condition don't define me. And your current condition ought not define you. She said, I went away full, but the Lord has brought me home empty. Why should you call me the when the Lord has caused me to suffer and the Almighty has sent such a, a tragedy? And so we saw the Orpah went back. And now we see where Naomi she sits down, feeling sorry for herself. Anybody in here right now sit down on the promises that God has put in front of you? Sit down on the, the dreams that God laid out before you? Sit down, you just happy just being saved. You just happy just showing up to church. They, they only show back up to, to a hometown. But she was feeling so bitter and so sad for herself. She went home and just, just sat down. Oh, you ought not be that way. God is still good to you despite what you're going through right now. Oh, this ain't really been your first time. Sometimes we go through something and act like it's the first time. But all you got to do is think back a little bit. The same God that blessed you back then. It's the same God that can bless you today. Oh, but you can't get there feeling sorry for yourself. You can't get there saying, woe is me. And you got to have a number, let's have a debtor to it. What I'm going through right now, I'm still blessed. Nevertheless, what I'm dealing with, I'm still blessed. Nevertheless, what they say about it. I'm still blessed. Here, he says that Naomi, she sits down. And so now I got Orpah. Orpah went back. I got Naomi. Naomi sat down. Can I tell you, Naomi and Orpah would never get what God had planned for them. You can't, you'll never get what God has planned for you when you're willing to go back to what you used to be. What he delivered you from. You'll never get what God has planned for you when you just come in and sit down. You you just a, a, a lump on the log. You ain't participating. You ain't adding to it. You ain't making a difference. And folks on your job don't even know you know Jesus. 
Folks in your house don't even know you know Jesus. You'll never get there. Yeah, woe is me. I, I've been through this and I, I've been through that. And he been through it. He, he went through some things. I feel bad for you, but you you, you can't get you can't, you can't get all the blessing that God has in store for you. I, I feel for you, and I don't like it either. That's why I fight like I fight. I, I don't like it either. Oh, but the fight don't take the joy out my spirit. It don't matter how much I gotta fight a Klansman or a racist on, on Tuesday and Wednesday. On Friday, I'm still gonna hang out and have a good time with my grandbabies. Uh, this joy that the Lord gave, the world can give it, and the world can't take it away. Oh, uh, you, 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 you gotta know that you blessed in spite of it. Uh, just because I stand up doesn't mean I'm blessed. Uh, just because I speak out doesn't mean that I'm not blessed. Uh, you got to get out of that mindset. Uh, there's an old slave mindset uh, that says that if we complain or if we talk or if we say something uh, that, that some kind of way we're, 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 we're going back and forgetting and, and, and going and holding on to history. No, I need history so I don't repeat it anymore. I need history to measure where I am at right now. Uh, if I know you owe me three dollars uh, and I look back at history and history said you owe me three dollars uh, but I'm looking at my head and I ain't got a 50 cent uh, I got to use history to hold you accountable to what you owe me. No, I ain't fussing because I'm mad. I ain't fussing because I'm mad. I'm fussing because it's mine. And there's some blessings that God has ordained for your life. Uh, there's some things that God has ordained for your life uh, and we're passing those things up. Uh, God said you're the head and not the tail. Uh, you are Settle and, and be satisfied with where they're being at the bottom of, of every statistic. Uh, God says that you're blessed uh, and highly favored. Uh, you ought not be satisfied uh, being treated like you're cursed. Uh, God says you're made uh, in the image of Him. Uh, you ought not be satisfied uh, with police beating your sons uh, and beating your daughters uh, like they have lost their mind. Uh, you ought not be satisfied uh, because God made you in His own image. God made you in His own image. God made you in His own image. And the Bible says that Orpah, huh, that she went back. Huh? It also says that Naomi, huh? it says that she sat down. Huh? But there's another woman in this story. Huh? And that woman in this story, huh? her name is Ruth. Huh? And the Bible says huh, that in Ruth chapter 2, verses 1 through 3, huh, the scripture says, huh, now there was a wealthy, uh, influential man uh, in Bethlehem uh, named Boaz, uh, who was a relative of Naomi's husband, uh, and Elimelech. It says, one day Ruth said to Naomi, let me go out into the fields to gather leftover grain behind anyone who will let me do it. And Naomi says, all right, my daughter, go ahead. And it says, so Ruth went out to gather grain behind the harvesters. And as it happened, she found herself working in a field that belonged to Boaz, the relative of her father-in-law, uh, a little uh, somebody say yeah, somebody say yeah, the Bible says uh, that Elba went back, it also says uh, that Naomi sat down, uh, but it also says uh, that Ruth, uh, she, she went out uh, and went forward uh, into the field of harvest, uh, you gotta know without a shadow of doubt uh, that despite what it looks like right now, uh, there's a great harvest out there for me, uh, but I gotta get up uh, and go out into the field. Uh, she said, I don't have to be the biggest person uh, or the most important person, uh, but if I can just get in the field, uh, I'll follow behind the folk uh, that got the best positions. Uh, I'll follow behind the folk uh, that seem like they got all the favor. Uh, Cause all I gotta do uh, is get in the game. Uh, if I can get on the field, uh, Respect the difference myself. Somebody say yeah. Somebody say yeah. The Bible says when Orpah went back and Naomi sat down, it said that Ruth went forward into the field of harvest. And as a result of not going back and not sitting down, Luke chapter 4, verses 1 through 10, she put herself in a position to receive the fullness of God because she did go back, she did sat down, but she went to go get what God had promised her. And verses 1 through 10 said that once she put herself in position, she put herself in a place to where God could bless her with every last one of the promises. Somebody say yeah. Somebody say yeah.
say yeah. He said, so Boaz went uh, to the town gate uh, and he took a seat there uh, when the family redeemer uh, he had mentioned came to Boaz, uh, called out to him uh, and says, come over here, friend. Uh, I want to talk to you. Uh, so they sat down together. Uh, he said, then Boaz called uh, the ten leaders. Uh, see, Boaz had already saw something uh, in Ruth. Uh, he said, I see a woman uh, that's not willing to go back. Uh, I see a woman uh, that's not willing to sit down. Uh, but I see a woman uh, that's willing to get in the fight uh, and do whatever she has to do uh, to get what God uh, has promised her. He uh, said, then Boaz called uh, the ten leaders from the town. Uh, and he said, I need y'all uh, to come and witness something. Uh, he says, I see. Uh, he says, he said to the family redeemer, uh, you know Naomi uh, who came back from Moab. So uh, that you can redeem it uh, if you wish. Uh, but if you want the land, uh, he said, then you got to go ahead and buy it uh, in the presence uh, of these witnesses. Uh, somebody say yeah. Somebody say yeah. But if you don't want the land, uh, you got to let me know right away. Uh, because in the next, uh, because I'm next in line uh, to redeem it after you. Uh, can I tell you? Sometimes in this country, I, I feel like uh, they don't want me here, uh, they don't like me, uh, and wish that they never uh, would have brought me here. Uh, but you know what? Uh, I ain't going back to Africa. Uh, you know what? Uh, I ain't going back nowhere. Uh, because my folk uh, work so hard, uh, and now I own it. Uh, it belongs to me. Uh, somebody say that. Yeah. Somebody say yeah. Somebody say yeah. He said, if you don't want to let me know, because I'm next in line to redeem it after you. And the man said, all right, I'll redeem it. That's what this country says concerning me. I want them as long as I can get something out of them. I love them. When they were slaves and worked for free. I love them when I can benefit from them. I love them in the new Jim Crow system where I use the prison system to make money off of them. I love them, but when it comes to sharing power, when it comes to sharing resources, they respond like the first one that had the opportunity. Say yeah. Verse 6 goes on and it 
Sixteen says, "It says Naomi, she took." 